On December 26, 1893, a child named Mao Zedong was born to a family of wealthy farmers in Shaoshan, Hunan province. Little did anyone know that this child would grow up to be a figure who would shape the destiny of a nation and leave an indelible mark on the world. But his journey was far from ordinary. Mao's early years were marked by rebellion and restlessness. He attended the village school for five years, where he studied Confucian classics. However, his restive spirit led him to leave school at the tender age of 13, choosing instead to work full-time on the family farm. This act of defiance was just a precursor to the tumultuous life he would lead. Throughout his youth, Mao's rebellious nature got him expelled from several schools, and at one point, he even ran away from home for several days. But his destiny was calling, and it would lead him on a path of revolution. In 1911 and 1912, during the revolution that would ultimately overthrow the Qing dynasty, Mao became a soldier in the barracks of Changsha. He boldly cut off his long braid of hair, a symbol of anti-Manchu revolt, and called for Sun Yat-sen to be the president. Mao's thirst for knowledge and revolutionary ideas only grew stronger with time. Between 1913 and 1918, he attended the teacher's training school, where he was introduced to revolutionary concepts. The 1917 Russian Revolution and the ancient Chinese philosophy of legalism left an indelible mark on his developing ideology. After graduation, Mao followed his professor Yang Changji to Beijing, where he worked at the Beijing University Library. It was here that he came under the influence of Li Dajiao, a co-founder of the Chinese Communist Party whose ideas would shape Mao's revolutionary thinking. In 1920, Mao married Yang Kaihui, the daughter of his professor, despite his earlier marriage. This was a pivotal moment as he read a translation of the Communist Manifesto and his commitment to Marxism was sealed. In 1924, the Chinese political landscape took a dark turn when the Nationalist Party under Chiang Kai-shek ruthlessly massacred thousands of communists in Shanghai, marking the beginning of China's civil war. Mao was undeterred and led the Autumn Harvest Uprising in Changsha against the Kuomintang. The KMT's brutal crackdown forced Mao and his surviving followers into the countryside, where they rallied more peasants to their cause. As the KMT gained control of Beijing in 1928, they were recognized as the official government of China by foreign powers. But Mao and the communists persisted, establishing peasant Soviets in the southern Hunan and Jiangxi provinces. Despite facing extreme challenges, Mao was laying the foundations of Maoism, his unique brand of communism. Tragedy struck in 1930 when a local warlord captured Mao's wife, Yang Kaihui, and executed her in front of their young son. Yet, Mao's commitment to the cause remained unbroken. In the same year, he married He Zijin, his third wife. In 1931, Mao was elected chairman of the Soviet Republic of China in Jiangxi province. He initiated a reign of terror against landlords, resulting in the torture and death of thousands. His Red Army, consisting mostly of poorly armed peasants, numbered 45,000. Under mounting KMT pressure, Mao was eventually demoted from his leadership position. Chiang Kai-shek's forces surrounded the Red Army in the mountains of Jiangxi, compelling them to embark on a desperate escape in 1934. The arduous journey became known as the Long March, 6,000-kilometer trek beset by freezing weather, treacherous mountain paths, unbridged rivers, and attacks from warlords and the KMT. Only 7,000 out of the 85,000 who started the journey made it to Shanxi in 1936. It was during this incredible ordeal that Mao cemented his position as the leader of the Chinese communists, rallying his troops despite their dire circumstances. In 1937, Japan's invasion of China forced the Chinese communists and the KMT to put their civil war on hold as they united against this new threat. This cooperation continued until Japan's defeat in World War II in 1945. 
The turning point came in 1948 with the Siege of Changchun, where the People's Liberation Army, PLA, as the Red Army was now known, defeated the KMT's forces. On October 1, 1949, Mao confidently declared the establishment of the People's Republic of China. The PLA soon besieged the last KMT stronghold in Chengdu, Sichuan, prompting Chiang Kai-shek and other KMT officials to flee to Taiwan. With the birth of the People's Republic of China, Mao embarked on a journey to shape the nation's destiny. Radical reforms were initiated, including the execution of landlords and the redistribution of their land to impoverished peasants. A campaign to suppress counter-revolutionaries claimed countless lives, primarily those of former KMT members, intellectuals and businessmen. Between 1953 and 1958, Mao launched the first five-year plan with the aim of transforming China into an industrial powerhouse. Bolstered by his initial success, he launched the second five-year plan known as the Great Leap Forward in 1958. He urged farmers to smelt iron in their backyards instead of tending to their crops. The consequences were catastrophic, resulting in an estimated 30, 40 million Chinese succumbing to the Great Famine of 1958 to 60. Even as he led China through these tumultuous times, Mao continued to exert his influence on the global stage. He sent the People's Volunteer Army to fight alongside North Korea during the Korean War, preserving a stalemate that endures to this day. In 1951, he also sent the PLA into Tibet to liberate it from the rule of the Dalai Lama. By 1959, China's relationship with the Soviet Union had deteriorated significantly. The two communist powers clashed over the wisdom of the Great Leap Forward, China's nuclear ambitions, and the brewing Sino-Indian War of 1962. Relations soured to the point that they severed all ties in the Sino-Soviet split. In 1962, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, held a Conference of the 7,000 in Beijing, during which Liu Shaoqi criticized the Great Leap Forward and Mao's policies. Mao was effectively sidelined within the party's power structure, with Liu and Deng Xiaoping, pragmatic moderates, leading the way. They released peasants from communes and imported wheat from Australia and Canada to feed the famine survivors. Mao was relegated to a figurehead role in the government for several years, but he spent that time plotting his return to power and seeking revenge on Liu and Deng. He harnessed the specter of capitalist tendencies among the powerful and the influence of young people to regain his hold on power. In August 1966, at the age of 73, Mao made a pivotal speech at the plenum of the Communist Central Committee. He called upon the youth of the nation to launch his cultural revolution, a movement aimed at purging China of what he perceived as the four olds, old customs, old culture, old habits, and old ideas. This unleashed the Red Guards, a group of zealous young revolutionaries who would go on to commit acts of cultural vandalism and violence. The Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution, initiated by Chairman Mao Zedong in May 1966, aimed to reassert his control over the Communist Party. It unleashed chaos, brutality, and bloodshed. The revolution, depicted as rejuvenating socialism, resulted in a crippled economy, millions of lives ruined, and a decade of turmoil. Mao sought to eliminate opponents, leading to mass violence, destruction of bourgeois symbols, and the persecution of intellectuals and party officials. The death toll ranged from 500,000 to 2 million. After Mao realized the revolution had spiraled out of control, he sent urban youth to the countryside and called in the army, effectively creating a military dictatorship. The Cultural Revolution's legacy includes the nation's embrace of capitalism and a focus on political control and stability. Beijing largely remains silent on this dark chapter in history. Mao seized this opportunity to eliminate his rivals, purging both Liu Shaoqi and Deng Xiaoping from the party's leadership. 
Liu died tragically in prison, and Deng was sent into exile to work in a rural tractor factory, while his son was thrown from a fourth-story window and paralyzed by Red Guards. The Cultural Revolution continued through the 1970s, with Mao's health steadily deteriorating. He may have suffered from Parkinson's disease or ALS, along with heart and lung trouble due to a lifetime of smoking. By July 1976, while the nation grappled with the Great Tangshan earthquake, the 82-year-old Mao was confined to a hospital bed in Beijing. He suffered two major heart attacks in September and eventually succumbed on September 9, 1976, after being removed from life support. Mao's death marked a turning point in Chinese politics. The moderate pragmatists within the Chinese Communist Party took power, ousting the leftist revolutionaries. Deng Xiaoping, now rehabilitated, led the country toward an economic policy of capitalist-style growth and wealth through export. Madame Mao and the other members of the Gang of Four were arrested and tried for their role in the Cultural Revolution's excesses. Despite his complex legacy, Mao is still known as the founding father of modern China, and his ideology continues to influence policies in China today. Deng Xiaoping, who succeeded Mao, once declared that Mao was 70% correct in his policies. However, he also acknowledged that the Great Famine was 30% natural disaster, 70% human error. Regardless of these complexities, Mao's thought remains an enduring force in China, guiding its policies and shaping its destiny in the 21st century.